Jeff is in charge of policy at, for a disaster recovery, no, not you? No, nothing, no. He's not in charge of policy. He's in charge of operations. So are you? So do you not view disaster recovery as policy? I talked to about the National Guard. I talked to them about it immediately, and, they, and the thought was that we don't really need the National Guard in here. I didn't think enough at that time to say, okay, well, could they, could they do charging stations? Could they do, could they bring ice? Could they direct traffic? I didn't think to ask those things. That's what I'm trying to reach him and say, are there resources that, that they could help with? But but the, it's not it's not like the National Guard shows up and everything is fine. We're still not gonna have street lights, we're still not gonna have electricity, we're still not um, um, we're still not gonna have the power lines handled yet. I mean all those all that work is, is ongoing and the National Guard can't help. But could they be helping on these other things? And unfortunately and, and for some people, just seeing them around uh, with that, would they feel like more was being done? Maybe. Um, I, you know, people, I haven't heard how many accidents have been. Do but, you think you, you should know, be out there more? How can I? I've been out there. I did a, I did a thing yesterday. I'm, I'm in the streets. What more can I do? Tell me what more I can do. Because nobody has power. Nobody can see. We're, again, we're, we're thinking about doing a press conference today because power is starting to come back on. Okay. I'm sorry. It's, no, no, no. It's it's not. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to understand no, more about yeah, what's this going is on. Fair, but we're we're everybody is working frantically on this, and the fact that we don't maybe do it um, the way other people. Well, one thing people don't know all the work is getting done because we can't communicate. That's how that's how, how how do you view your role in this situation? I, I don't even know what the question is. So, how do you view your I, role in disaster recovery? I am a bit of kind of the spokesperson for the city, so that's certainly part of my role. Part of my role is to help get information out. Part of my role in this is to reassure people that we'll get through this, and here's what the city is doing and will continue to do, um, and to make sure that people get information on whatever resources are available to them. And we're doing that to the extent we can. When more people get power, boom, that will be out there. I mean, the radio stations um, are constantly saying, if you have to reading um, our statements on, here's here's what about tree removal, here's water, here's all this stuff there. I, I hear them every time I'm in the car. and. They always say, if you can get to the city's website, there's full information on the city's website about all the resources and what the steps that are happening. So if you're the spokesperson and you're out, I mean, a critic would say that if you're the spokesperson, why aren't you out here screaming that we need help? I don't know that we need help. That's the thing. I, I just told you, I, I don't know what, what other We're back. This is Rock Hard Caucus, episode 38. It's been a while. Um, hey, do you guys remember how to uh, do a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I guess we're going to find out. <laughs> we'll see. I remember how to yeah. cut up trees. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if you if you didn't catch everybody's voices there, if you... If you don't recognize us, uh, all four of the original Rock Hard Caucus founders are present for this episode, which is uh, an occasion unto itself. Right. We don't get that too often anymore. Uh, But we also just haven't done a podcast at all in almost a month. (laughs) So I figured to start things off today, we could just uh, discuss what happened over the last month. If you didn't catch this, uh, Natalie and I appeared on a special episode of Eat the Rich. Uh, you can find that at soundcloud.com slash eat the rich pod. And we discussed the derecho that hit Iowa on August 10th on that show. And uh, I guess we can start there today as well. So, uh, yeah, what what was everybody's experience with that uh, unprecedented weather event? I think I want to hear from Natalie and Evan first, since you guys were like uh, got like the 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 front end of it, like in our yeah, our yeah. air 
our broadcasting area uh <laughs> like you were the first two to experience it mm-hmm. yeah so i uh was like at work w- logged into my computer and i literally got a email from my boss to call her and i called her and i got a promotion <laughs> like immediately <laughs> before the storm hit <laughs> oh, oh my nice. god congratulations Look, congratulations dude <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was great. And then it was also like my best friend at work's last day there. <laughs> so I was like texting her and then she was just like, does it look really ominous where you are? And I was like, oh, yeah, it does, actually. And then like the sirens immediately started going off and uh, it got really pretty intense and it knocked over a couple trees within like, you know, a couple yards of my house and uh, big branches rocking our driveway. So couldn't get in or out for a little while there, but nothing really major. Like it just sort of flickered off on and off of the power. And so I didn't really know the extent of the damage and I was already just discombobulated from work. So I didn't really, you know, it just seemed like any other sort of like severe thunderstorm that we get every year. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really kind of know the extent of how, how bad it was. And, uh, I, I was able to, I think at least alert some of the guys in our, like Chuck, I think didn't know about it until I had mentioned no, it. But not I really. didn't. I, I never heard rain. the word "derecho" at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I was super lucky. Yeah, you didn't even lose internet, right? No, no, it was fine. I just went back to work, and like I should have said something earlier, because like half of the people in my work were out for a little while at least. Um, and I know a lot of people like in Des Moines, like I know Natalie got a lot worse. So did you uh, see people like going offline, like one by one? On your network at work, didn't you say? Yeah, yeah, like half of the people um, I could see were offline. Which isn't normal. Like, <laughs> No, no. Yeah, like I knew it was pretty bad just because it, you know, my, my, my power did like flicker on and off. Like my computer rebooted like five times. But for some reason it didn't, didn't ever go out completely. But it, it wasn't nearly as bad here as in Cedar Rapids. Like it was, I mean, probably 70 or 80 mile per hour winds versus... Almost double that, like double. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely picked up speed as it goes going across like the really flat part of the state. It was it was weird shit. Like for the for it to be during the day and then the world outside is completely black. Like it looks like the dead of night. It's crazy. So I I watched it but my work never lost internet. But at home we lost power for four or five days internet we lost a a tree it fell on a power line next to us um and then everything that was on our patio was shattered (laughs) so um and we lost all our food but none of those things are like even close to what happened in cedar rapids Um, right yeah all all that damage that you got was like pretty good (laughs) yeah all those like everything was repairable and everything was i mean it was like what everyone was dealing with versus some of the exceptional horrors I saw with my friends in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> Whereas like, I, I don't know. And it felt like, like my entire neighborhood was outside helping each other, like clean up the down trees and stuff. And like, you know, it, it was okay. It was, we were co- we were able to get kind of our, our house and neighborhood back to normal in like a week or a week and a half. Um, and it could, it could have been so much worse. I mean, it was fucking sweltering in our house and everything that was outside was ruined. But it's like, you know, we lost $250 of food and power for a week. And like, you know, the the worst thing for us was that Cooper works at home, my husband. And so he lost a week's worth of pay. And that was the worst. Ouch. Yeah. That, that was the problem. Like, like, damage around the house was nothing compared to Cedar Rapids, and you just went out there with a chainsaw and cleaned up. No big deal. But losing a week of, of money is is not good. And this <laughs> gestures, gestures at In world. this economy? <laughs> In, In this, this economy. economy. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about Eastern Iowa? It seems like it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. So as far as I know, you know, noth- nothing major over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I- I'm in Coralville, you know, next to Iowa City. And, uh, you know, a- as I was doing for most of the summer, I woke up at like 11. Uh, 
<laughs> the crack of noon. Yeah, I was, I was <laughs> <laughs> sitting in bed looking at Twitter on my phone, and then uh, I heard the siren start going off. And uh, my wife Ashley, she works from home, and I was like, "Hey, what? Why is that happening?" She's like, "I don't know. We assumed it was just like uh, when the sirens go off for like a severe thunderstorm or whatever." Right? Yeah, you not know. uncommon. Yeah, not a big deal. It happens occasionally. Uh, so then I, I came in here into the uh, the office, and uh, there's a, a window behind where I sit here that faces our neighbor's place, and I turned around, and like a big tree branch just kind of flew past our window and slammed into this like porch swing that they had sitting next to their garage and just knocked it over. That's when we realized that it, it was maybe more than just a severe thunderstorm. And um, I was actually, I was editing... Or no, the night before I finished oh, editing right, yeah. our previous episode, and <laughs> I was uploading it, like in the process of uploading it, when uh, our power went out. So I, oh. I was more more <laughs> upset about that than anything. <laughs> it delayed the release by like several days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was I was pretty pissed off because it was a good episode and it was done and it was right there. Like I have it here on my computer. It's finished, but the power goes out, which is like okay, fine, because. Our power came back like two seconds later. That was it. We just had like one flicker and then the power was back. But our internet didn't come back for a couple days. So I was just staring at this completed product. <laughs> <laughs> Unable to provide it to the, the masses. <laughs> uh, yeah, and so we walked around the neighborhood a little bit in the aftermath. And it was like a few trees had fallen in the road. Uh, a few trees had fallen on power lines. But overall not too bad around here like we got it cleaned up within within the week i think everything was pretty much back to normal there are a few pockets in iowa city that are still kind of dealing with uh downed power lines and uh internet access but overall not too bad down here but uh back in our hometown i think chuck dealt with the worst of it uh (laughs) so I had the day off, actually. Uh, it was a very rare three-day weekend for me, so I was pretty excited about that. Uh, we were getting our ceiling redone at work, and uh, I was hanging out at home, and it was kind of gray outside, and I I knew that there were storms in the forecast, but I hadn't really heard much else. And I was talking to a mutual friend of Evan and I's on Discord, who lives in New Orleans, and, uh, you know, we were going to play like Fall Guys or something. It was probably like noon or so, maybe a little bit before noon, and I could hear the sirens going off, which, as we've established, isn't really uncommon around here. Like, they test them the first Wednesday Wednesday of every month here in Cedar Rapids, and, you know, they'll go off as sort of a warning. It's not really... I mean, I can't ever remember hearing them go off and, like, needing to go seek shelter immediately. It's always been like, you know, hey, something's might be kind of close, like, look out. Yeah. And so they went off, and a friend of mine that I was talking to said, uh, what's that? I'm like, oh, it's just the, the weather siren. And he's like, well, does that uh, go off very often? And I sat and I thought about it for a second. I'm like, uh, it's been a while uh, mm-hmm. now that I'm thinking about it. So <laughs> I pulled up the radar, and I could see, you know, the, the band of storms coming from Des Moines and heading east, and I'm like, oh, that looks pretty pretty heavy, and then I looked at our group DM, and I saw that Evan had just said, oh, yeah, we just had, like, 80-mile-an-hour winds come through here, and I was like, oh, shit, you know, and uh, so I I put the cats down in the basement, sort of corralled, corralled them down there and shut the door, and I looked at the radar again, and I was, like, backing it up and then playing it, and it was just, like, getting stronger as it was heading to Cedar Rapids. And because uh, it was, like, red, and then it started turning purple on the radar, which I haven't seen before. And I was like, oh, shit, dude, this might be bad. And I live in a, a pretty old part of Cedar Rapids. Um, I guess it helps to say that Cedar Rapids is a very old town. There's a lot of, well, for, for Iowa, it's, it's an old town. Yeah. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of very old trees that are, you know, 70 to 100 years old, if not more. Yeah. And then we have problems with the ash borer here, also in Cedar Rapids, which has weakened the integrity of a lot of ash trees, which make up a lot of the trees that we have here. So I go outside, and I'm kind of looking at the sky, and it's like I can see the storms off to the, off to the west, up in the sky, and uh, 
you know, it was really dark and it really wasn't anything I hadn't seen before. So I was like, yeah, I'm just going to put my truck in the driveway just in case, which in hindsight was a stupid idea because it would have gotten crushed, which would have been nice. Uh, so I, I get in my truck <laughs> and I, I start it up and I pull into the driveway between my house, and my neighbor's house, which, uh, the, our two houses would kind of provide shelter from anything that would fall. There's really not, not much nearby. And I was listening to the radio broadcast and, uh, they were saying, you know, winds in excess, hundred miles an hour. I'm like, oh fuck. You know, I sat there listening to it for probably five minutes. And then the, from the time that I got in my truck and pull it in the driveway to when I got out, the temperature had dropped like 15 degrees, which is never a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's usually the hallmark of a pretty severe storm coming uh, here. And uh, I could hear, it was just like silence. Like I couldn't, like there's a lot of like birds and squirrels and shit in my neighborhood and I always hear them all the time and I couldn't hear them at all. So I'm like, okay. So <laughs> I went inside and I filled up a bottle of water and I got my phone and I went down to the basement and as I was going to the basement, the cats were trying to get out, and I'm like kicking them back down the stairs, like get down there, you fucking idiots! Like you don't want to be upstairs <laughs> right now. So I'm like, I didn't like, I didn't kick them like a football. Well, I, just... I know you didn't kick them. No, I don't mean that. I was like worried about your kitties. Oh, I didn't. No. I'm, like, I didn't get down think the idiots. Like, yeah, they're too like, stupid. I didn't think you yeah. kicked your cat <laughs> like, like a football. The, you know, <laughs> I'm like booting them back down the stairs, and I I get down into the basement and the winds had kind of started to pick up and it was starting to rain. And <laughs> I was, it's funny. Cause I, I think I had, I think I still have some kind of trauma from watching this. Cause I think this was the closest thing I've had to a near death experience in my life, but I'm down there and the winds are picking up and like, they're really blowing and it wasn't blowing in like gusts. It was just like a straight line wind. Mm-hmm. So, and then it was just getting like faster and faster and faster. So I'm in my basement and I'm looking out of the storm windows, which to those of you who don't know what a storm window is, there are these sort of rectangular windows that are up high on your basement wall that are at ground level that you can sort of look out and see. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm looking out into my backyard, into the alley, watching uh, the wind blow and it's just blowing harder and harder. And like all the cats have like hidden in different spots in the basement. So they knew something was going on. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, dude, like this sucks. It's my fucking day off and this bullshit's happening. So I, I'm looking out my back window and I'm like, I should probably get away from the window because this is, it's really getting strong. Like I, I hadn't seen wind like that before. Little did I know that it was going to get even faster. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm sitting in a chair in the middle of my basement and the power flickered a little bit and then it came on and like my central air was running and I was sitting right next to it and it, I heard it like kind of stop and then it fired back up and it was running, and then the power, instead of flickering, it would go off for, like, two seconds, and then come back on for a couple seconds, and then go off for a couple seconds, and then come back on. It probably did that about six or seven times, which is, like, electrical infrastructure being torn apart. It's it's just, like, incredible stress being put on the power lines outside, because as they're, like, disconnecting and reconnecting themselves in the wind, uh, more or less. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, so the, the lights are, like, flickering slowly, and then just, boom, they go out. And then... Now that it's silent down there without the air running, uh, it's I went over to the window and I'm looking out the back and I'm watching the tree line across the alley on the opposite street just getting thinner and thinner, and like there's like power lines are just like swinging out in the alley and they start coming down and I'm like, dude, this is fucking serious, and I couldn't get a hold of anybody because there was no cell service because a lot of the cell towers were damaged, mm-hmm. so I've got no signal down there. It's dark. It, I, I opened the window and it sounded like a freight train going through the alley. It's like the only way that I can describe it. Like it literally sounded like a train barreling down the alley behind my house. And I shut the window and I'm looking out there and I got this big, well, I had this big pine tree in my backyard. It was probably about 90 feet tall and the wind was blowing at it like towards my house. And I was watching it just like slowly bend and then it went pop and it uprooted and it fell straight towards me and I like dove backwards and like put my hands over the back of my head Holy and shit. like fucked up my elbows and my knees on the basement floor because I just I just dove like instinctively just dove backwards and I heard it land and I'm like fuck did that hit the house and you know I'm looking out across the alley and like there's trees coming down and I'm looking out the other storm windows and I'm seeing like massive trees coming down all over the street i'm watching power lines come down i saw a couple of cars get crushed just from this little window down there 
This went on for about 40 minutes, mind you. So I'm down here in my basement for about 40 minutes. And at the apex of it, when the winds were like blowing at their hardest, I could hear my house starting to shake above me. Like I, Holy I could like shit. I could like hear like windows rattling and I could hear like the the bones of the house like shaking and I really thought that it was going to collapse. Like I thought that the house was going to cave in on me and I was going to get buried in the basement. I started to kind of freak out a little bit and you know I I calm like, sweating and like I I took my shirt off cuz I was sweating so bad and I'm like trying to calm myself down and I can't get through to anybody and I just sort of realized at that time that like I'm completely helpless right now. Like I'm completely powerless right now. There's there's nothing I can do except just hope that I don't fucking die. So I'm just like looking out the window and then, you know, it's still blowing really hard. And I'm like, fuck this. I got to go upstairs and make sure that the no, no windows got broke out or anything. So I run upstairs. And I'm, I'm, I'm running through the house and uh, I, I see everything's fine. The bathroom is fine, which is in the direction that the tree fell. You know, there's no holes or anything. There's no water coming in. So I was like kind of relieved, and then I went upstairs, and we have a couple bedrooms upstairs, and I was making sure that the windowed air in my bedroom didn't get pulled out of the window. It was still there. All the windows were intact. I'm like, okay, thank God. But then our spare bedroom up there, I heard the door bang against the frame, like, doo, 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 doo. and I'm like, oh, shit, there's a fucking window open. Mm -hmm. So I turned the knob on the door, and the wind was blowing straight in that way from the west. And it, like, ripped the door out of my hand and, like, swung it open from the force of it. And, like, a bunch of shit in that room was just blown all over the place. And I get in there and I slam the fucking window. And I run back downstairs. And the storm went on for probably another good ten minutes before I was like, okay, I can probably go upstairs. Because, like, it was starting to slow down. And I get upstairs and I, I get a change of clothes. And I put my boots on. And I put my rain jacket on. And I put a hat on. And I go outside and a bunch of my neighbors are just standing outside also. Like, I wouldn't describe it as it looked like we had a storm. It looked like a bomb went off because there was trees just that were, like, ripped out of the ground, like huge yeah. ones. Like, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I never thought I would see this, like, firsthand, you know? So I get outside, and, like, there's downed wires everywhere. There's no cell reception. Nobody has power, obviously, for that first like four hours from where I live and like the probably the houses across the street and like the three adjacent houses in either direction. Like we were, we were trapped there because there was like huge trees that were down blocking intersections and blocking roads. So I kind of took inventory of the house. I kind of walked around. I looked at the, I, that pine tree that fell missed the house by about maybe a foot and a half, just barely missed Whoa. it to the East. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking around, there's a bunch of fucking shingles. Like I could hear the shingles getting ripped off my roof while I was down there. So I'm kind of like picking them up and uh, I got my Sawzall, which I thankfully charged. And uh, me and a few other neighbors cleared a tree out of the street. It took us a, a few hours to do it so we could get so, like, traffic and make it through. Because apparently there was a way to get through. But And then people were coming by and saying like, Ellis is blocked completely. Uh, like this spot's blocked completely. Like there's no way to get through. And like, mind you, I can't get through to anybody, right? I mean, I've got a lot of family that lives here in Cedar Rapids and I, I can't get through to anybody at all. The only person I could get through to for some reason was my girlfriend who was at work at the time in Coralville. Yeah. And I was trying to tell her like how bad it was here. And she's like, was it really that bad? Was it that bad? I'm like, fuck, like it, you'll see when you get home. Like it's nuts. <laughs> if you um, can get home. If you can get home. <laughs> yeah. um, so like, and she's telling me that like, she sent one of her coworkers home early, lives in Cedar Rapids, and they were, like, stuck in, like, a gridlock on 380 heading northbound. And uh, I spent the next day cleaning up the damage in my yard. It took most of the day. And then I had I had a lot to, to take care of at work because the this, this storm and not having power really caused a lot of issues for us there. I didn't have power for 12 days after that. 12 days. 12 days. I had no power. And mind you... Like, half of those 12 days, I was still going to work full-time. Like, I was still going to work for 50 hours, you know, 45 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And, like, it was hot. And it's 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 weird because you start to learn how to, like, ration things you didn't think you have to ration. Like, your cell phone battery, for instance. And, like, candles and shit were pretty important. But, and, like, the, the food that we could get. I think I lived off a of gas station food for that whole, like, week <laughs> and a half. Like, the yeah. warmer. Mm. Well, yeah, I couldn't cook anything. Like... My water heater is electric, so I had no hot water either. So, like, I'm taking these cold sh these cold showers and 
going to work and then like coming home and taking another cold shower and then just like it's hot in the house. There's just nothing you can do about it. And I have to say, like, it was quite the test of wills for me. There's a few times I really had to just like pick myself up and, you know, beat myself over the head and just, you know, be like, just it's it's fine. Like it could be worse. <laughs> I really did. Like I really had to will myself through like the back end of it because goddamn, like I was worn out, like wasn't really sleeping. There's generators running nonstop in the neighborhood. They're noisy. It's hot. It's just there's no light. It's just there's no street lights. It's just pitch black outside. And like there's there's no relief from it. Like I can't even like sit and like look at my phone because well I got to save the you battery. You can't life. even like yeah. fucking disassociate into no. the screen screens, which is no. what I need to live. Well, yeah, I, I have yeah, to be able yeah, to just exactly. like. I think it's no, a meeting, though. No, like I understand completely. Yeah. No, I need no the like, Be extracted from your body yeah. and just yeah. dissociate the, the most, into the screens around you. I, I lost like power for day. like 48 hours <laughs> once, and I wanted to kill my neighbor who had a generator. <laughs> so, it, Well, that's the thing, too, is it did teach me quite a bit about myself in that time. And I had kind of a lot of time to sort of to think so it, it really wasn't. Yeah, no all, other choice. Yeah, it really wasn't all bad. Like I, I realized how many like very little things I take for granted. So that was Monday that that rolled through, and then we didn't have power until the next Thursday night. So not the Thursday after, but the week after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was wild. Lost a bunch of food, like everybody did. I was pretty fortunate that my internet came back on when it did. I don't know if it ever did go out or if it was fixed uh, at some point, but when my power came back on, the modem came back on too, which was quite the relief. Yeah. Just from like not being able to like wash clothes or like do the like wash dishes or anything really. And like the humidity in the house, the windows being open, like the house just fucking stunk. So, you know, we had to shampoo the carpets and do a lot of cleaning and stuff, which honestly kind of needed, but you know, it's much better now. Yeah, it was it was something else. I think that we absolutely got the tip of the spear here in Cedar Rapids, and the wreckage that I'm describing isn't exclusive to just my neighborhood. Like this, no. it, it's it's like 74 square miles or, or something it makes up Cedar Rapids, and like all of it was affected. The nice parts of town, of course, got their power back first. But like I said, I live in a pretty old part of town. It's not exactly a very high income part of town either. Uh, so we were kind of near the back of the list for our power coming back on. I do have to say, though, um, I spent a lot of time helping my neighbors and meeting them and talking to them, and they are quite the resilient bunch. There's a lot of people that were here during the flood in 08 that just, they rebuilt, they never left. So, like, they're they're a very hardy, a very hardy folk that are kind of better equipped for a disaster than I would think normal people would be. But when I, I went out for a drive Tuesday evening after I finished working on my house... And I used some of the little bit of hot water. I had to take a shower. And, like, the damage in the city was just, it was unreal. Like, I, I, I couldn't believe it. Like, you just, there were roads that you just couldn't go down at all. And there's places where you had to turn around because there's, like, a fucking live wire that's dangling four feet off the ground, you know, in the, in the middle of the road. And yep. nowhere has power. And there's people just out, like, wandering around in, the, in their yards and just, like, don't know what to do. And there's houses that have massive trees on them and cars that are crushed and it was just it was something it was kind of surreal it really was but one good thing though is i did get to reconnect with uh the precinct captain uh oh, yeah for, <laughs> yeah for bernie and i really kind of want to take back what i said about the guy because i i kind of i kind of called him a dope and i i thought he was kind of a dumbass um and that was just me being <laughs> A little upset because I was hoping he'd be a little more like prepared for the caucus, so to speak. But uh, he is a super nice guy. We talked about, you know, he had a tree on his house that him and I were working on. We would probably talk for seven hours out there about, you know, the working class. And I mean, I mean, I could go. We oh. we, we could have we could have we could have talked for fucking oh. days, but. That's like really beautiful. Like yeah. what? Like a tiny. Yeah. The neighborliness is a tiny silver lining. Yeah, and he lives just like across the street from me. He lives like kitty corner from me, more or less. And I thought I'd seen him out there before, but when I was out walking around, I saw him stand in the yard. I'm like, I remember you. You know, you're you're Ron. He's like, yeah, and he kind of remembered me too. And I was like, well, I mean, I got I got to take care of my house, but I'll I'll come back tomorrow and help you out. And he's like, oh, you don't have to. I'm like, nah, dude. It's you know so. I came back and him and I bullshitted for quite a while and uh, 
we, we got along very, very well. And I mean, I kind of consider him a friend now because I mean, I run into him, you know, outside and uh, he works not far from here at a place I go to pretty often. So like I see him there all the time and say hi to him. And you know, I met people in the alley behind me and, uh, you know, I was making well, next door. We got, there's a lady that lives there with her two kids and she had a generator and like, I, we, I were like going to get gas for her and shit for her generator. And like, she was like cooking food for everybody. Uh, cause she had a generator strong enough to power her fridge. So she'd get like a bunch of like weenies and burgers and stuff. And she was cooking out all the time for everybody. So like, it was, it, it was an awful experience and it was quite the test of wills for me. I think it was helpful knowing that there was, I had no choice and there was like nowhere that I could go. And like, there was no getting out of this. So I had no choice, but to just try to outlast it, so mm-hmm. to speak. But it, it wasn't all negative from it. And, after have, going through that and like worrying about my family and having to fucking work throughout this whole thing, which is one of the worst parts to be honest. And like when I came back home and like the air was running and the house was cool and I had hot water, I could just feel and, and internet, uh, by the way, yeah, and yeah, yeah. my computer worked again, which is nice. <laughs> uh, I could just feel like all this like toxic stress, just like melt off of my shoulders and like out of like the back of my head and like out of my neck and like out of my wrists and hands. And it was just like, God damn, like it's fucking over. Like, thank God. But <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty horrible. It, and, then I, and I honestly, I myself was pretty lucky because there are people that they lo- they pretty much lost everything. I mean, there's a lot of apartments here in Cedar Rapids that were more or less destroyed and yeah. they were not being properly maintained for people living there by people that own the building and what a shock yeah wow (laughs) they just basically told them after a while like well you just need to leave because we need to fix all this stuff i don't know where you're gonna go but good luck and uh so like there are people living in tents outside of apartments for a while um there are people that sustain damage to their homes and their vehicles that they they can't afford to fix i mean there's still houses that have trees on them around here because people they just can't afford to have it removed and there were people here from out of state and in state that were very clearly taking advantage of the situation and mm-hmm. scamming people and price gouging them. And, you know, pe- there's a lot of anxiety in the city and a lot of just, it was, I mean, the city is never going to be the same again. I mean, between that and like the Emerald Ash Borer, yeah. uh, C- Cedar Rapids has lost like some 60 to 70 percent of its tree canopy. Well, yeah. And there's or is a going to. 2008 and the 2016, 2015 floods, whatever that was. It was 16. Yeah. 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 Like that shit yeah. is ridiculous. There's been just like well, three pretty like major yeah. disasters and like natural Especially, disasters in the past like twelve years. Since we've yeah. been adults. Yeah. Yeah. Especially where I live, because where I live, there's there's a fucking notch in one of the closets on the second floor that the old owner of the house had there that was like the high water mark from mm. the flood. Yeah. So like where where I'm sitting right now was completely underwater. And like well underwater back in 08. And then, mm-hmm. of course, the response to that was, was less than adequate. And then we had the flood in 2016 that affected this area also, but it wasn't quite as bad because, you know. They took more precautions. Had, yeah. Far more precautions. Oh, yeah. Far more precautions. There weren't, there, of course, there were areas that weren't without damage, but yeah. And then now the storm here. Yeah. This, this part of town, specific, or especially, is just really just taking a fucking beating over the last 12 years and uh <laughs> the ice arena had uh the western wall just like ripped off of it and yeah. like, you could drive by and you can look in and you could see like that that like ice had like melted and like there was just like debris in the seats and you can see like the banners were all torn up in there and i kind of got a little choked up about it to be honest with you it was awful um but god damn it could have been a lot worse for me and i'm, I'm glad that it wasn't but that doesn't mean that it wasn't fucking terrible and i know i've talked mm-hmm. for like 20 minutes about this now but it was it was quite the event here in sea rapids yeah quite the event for me as well but yeah well you took the worst for a lot of, of people out of yeah. us so i figured you you would have a lot to say about it honestly justin too i i, I have to admit when i would when i would pop in and read the dm yeah, and I was listening. I was like, "You're like, oh, I don't have an internet." I was like, "You little motherfucker!" I'm gonna come and beat the fucking show to death. Fuck you, dude! I can't even. I can't even wash my asshole. Dude. It's cold water. I can't even wash my asshole. Yeah, it, we were like, "Oh, this, I, we have to update the switch. We have no internet." And I was like, "God, fuck you!" <laughs> and I mean, I wasn't. I, honestly, it was. It wasn't. You know, yeah. no hard feelings. But I was just like, "God damn!" Like this sucks. Well, I mean, that and was. 
That was the spirit in which I was posting those things. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like a minor jail sentence, really. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I, ca- I can't help but notice that the, the three uh, major disasters that we just referred to, they all occurred during election years. So I, I believe <laughs> that these, is are, true. That's interesting. these are all Democrat plots. They're false flags. False yeah, and the flags. Democrat-controlled Iowa... Every four <laughs> or eight years. Somebody uh, turned on the weather machine and targeted the, the purple district of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Iowa 01. Yeah, you mentioning uh, going to work reminded me of uh, something that happened to my dad. So my parents also live in Cedar Rapids. They live kind of near Beaver Park. Um, I think they didn't also have... Also a very old part of town. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used and to live there. Shit shitload of trees. I think they were out of power for around the same amount of time as you, Chuck. I think they got their power back on Friday, uh, oh, just yeah. the day after you. And uh, as far as I know, still do not have internet access, but their oh, phones dude. their phones are working, so they're yeah. able to communicate with us. The, the, the damage to, to the cable infrastructure here in town is especially bad because mm-hmm. a lot of that stuff was like built years and years ago and it's just been like bought and sold to different companies like i had a big um cable line like a cluster of cable line down across my in my backyard and like i had a power line in my backyard and i couldn't get a hold of anybody to get it fixed but i was kind of examining it with my neighbor across the alley who is an electrician i found out and we were looking at the house. See, for like it. you're meeting all these people. Like yeah. that's really touching. Like, yeah, I'll probably never talk to him again. For the most part, but uh, okay, <laughs> uh, okay, we're, we're, jeez. No, no, we're. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I say hi to him all the time now. I mean, I, I met these people. So we were looking at like the housing for this like cluster of cable lines, and like the housing said McLeod on it, and it was dated from like the late yeah. '90s. So like. <laughs> All that shit was super old on like these rotting, you know, and of course nothing is underground. Everything's above ground around here except for fiber. Yeah. It was a mess. Like, it, I don't know how, how you would sort that out uh, at all. And like, there's going to be people that you're not going to have internet cable for like another month. Like they don't, they don't have the people to fix that much damage. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I, Alan and Allie still don't yeah. have internet either. Shout out to Alan. That's fine He's, with yeah. me. Yeah, that's I working mean, fine for me. He doesn't need it, man. He's got that. Never mind. I, I won't. <laughs> I won't uh, <laughs> snitch on him. Uh, okay, so yeah, I was gonna talk about my dad. Um, so my dad Sorry, was working yeah. uh, when the derecho happened. He works for a trucking company. I won't. I won't get into too many specifics. I don't want to uh-huh. dox my father. But uh, he he was in the office when the storm was happening. Uh, the building that he works out of is kind of like shitty. Like they get leaks in there all the time. Like the the carpets probably uh, got mold all over underneath it. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah, it's a neglected building. Um, so the the sirens start going off. Everyone in the office is like, "Oh, this is an actual major event. We need to like take cover somewhere." So they were like figuring out what they were gonna do, and then the storm like somehow caused a gas leak in the building. <laughs> Oh, nice. So, so they were gonna take that cover. happened to my sister too. Yeah. So they were gonna take cover in the building, but then they had to evacuate the building because there's a gas leak. So uh, they started going towards this emergency exit, and they they're in the hall leading to the emergency exit, and this is a door that opens outward, you know, into the open because it's an exit. And while they were heading towards the exit, the wind blew that door into the building and like off of its hinges so that's how fast and jesus yeah, yeah powerful the wind was it like pushed a door the wrong way off of its uh off god of, damn yeah uh and then a piece of the ceiling fell onto one of my dad's co-workers <laughs> as they were trying to escape i'm laughing because the guy is fine he just had a, a big <laughs> bruise on his leg but it's just like total chaos uh so they they go out the front of the building, the main entrance, they're standing outside during the derecho. <laughs> so there's like, you know, un- hundred plus mile per hour winds and they're all like hugging the wall of the building. Like, <laughs> are we going to die? Like what, what's going on? And their building is close to a KFC. So one of them was like, maybe the KFC will let us stay in there. <laughs> and it ran across the parking lot over there. And they were like, yeah, you guys can take shelter in here. 
They all ran over to the KFC. The KFC has like like torrential water coming into the building. Like the ceiling the is giant just... windows <laughs> yeah. all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the ceiling is just like pouring rain. <laughs> so they had shelter, but barely. Uh, and then you know, as as the wind started dying down, they were all just like, "All right, fuck it, we're just going home." They all just got in their cars and left. <laughs> <laughs> I was strong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then it, it took my dad like two hours to get home. It's usually like you know a twenty to thirty minute drive. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, there's uh, a lot of people. Yeah, who had like there's people who went to the hospital for carbon monoxide poisoning from running their cars in their garages trying oh, to yeah, charge yeah. shit. And like, <laughs> I mean, there were fires that were started by them trying to turn on the power like before like surveying all of the infrastructure. Oh my god. Like yep. Alan and Alley had people on their street yeah. that had fires. Like they Oh yeah, yeah, half started on fire. They got yeah. power back for like thirty minutes, like halfway through their like twelve day <laughs> 11 day power oh my outage. god can you imagine like you want to just go strangle your neighbor <laughs> yeah but then yeah they said they had like five fire trucks show up and like they had to turn it off there's like an abandoned house that yeah, like got had a, a fire started yeah they said there were people like running out of their houses like shut the fucking power off like shut it back yeah, yeah. off like this fucking house <laughs> is on fire <laughs> when that happened that's when i was like God damn it, like, things are not going to be normal here again anytime soon if this shit's going on. So dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how do we feel about uh, Brad Hart, mayor of Cedar Rapids? Any thoughts on him? Uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, regarding the storm, or? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think that, I mean, I don't know, how, how do you, how, this isn't in the playbook, I don't think, if you're, like, no. a mayor of a, t- a city of, like, 150,000 people at the most. Like, this isn't something that you you have, like, a file for that you can turn to. Obviously, things could have been handled handled better, but from what I understand, uh, they weren't really able to secure, you know, any real help from, like, the National Guard or anything. It's just been, like, out-of-state contractors and... There's one particular contracting group that's here right now that has like these giant like semi trucks that carry these two big like grain bins. Like you would see them ship uh, like, you know, raw grain in that have cranes attached to them that have been going around and picking things up. And they're set up actually not too far from where I live in this little lot. Uh, they have like tents out there and like campers and shit. And like they're just living out there while they clean up the area. Um, he did issue a mask mandate. Uh, a couple oh, yeah. days ago so <laughs> I mean I guess that's not all bad uh, better late than never I guess but it's still very it's still very he elective. a participation trophy yeah it's it's still very much an elective policy where there's no real penalty for not doing it um, I think unless you're like a business or something but basically it's written in there that I believe the law is called uh, I think it's imminent threat where it's like businesses can deny you entry if they believe that you pose a direct threat to their other customers and their employees so like if you tried to like go to walmart to like buy a tv or something and they were like hey put a mask on please and you're like oh uh my religion says i don't have to which is the religion of america and (laughs) knowing that the fake news flu is not real uh yeah (laughs) yeah uh and they'd be have to be like, you know, oh well, I'm, I'm sorry, sir, come come right in. But they with under like this eminent threat law, which I I think it's that's what it's called. I I know I'm wrong, but they can be like, nah, fuck you. Like you pose a direct <laughs> danger to other customers and to our employees, so get bent. There's nothing like that that's written into it. So like you can claim, you know, if you have some sort of religious obligation to not wear a face covering or you have like a breathing problem or something, then you're exempt. But I mean, it's it has more people doing it, which is good. I think, but mm-hmm. well, I, I was uh, I was in Cedar Rapids um, Wednesday night, which I think was the day that they uh, announced the mask mandate. Uh, yeah, that sounds right because I went and bought a bunch of them for uh, my work for everybody. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I was I was up there Wednesday night. I stopped at a gas station, a uh, pretty small gas station, uh, and there were like four or five people in there with me, and I was the only one wearing a mask. Oh yeah, so. that's yeah, well, that's that's been gas stations, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. I, never rarely rarely see people when they pop into gas stations wearing one ever as as a gas station guy 
<laughs> As a gas station. <laughs> <laughs> gas station. I, guy. I'm a gas station. I go to the same gas station every day, either before or after work. I am a gas station guy. Yeah. I am a gas station. Uh, I stop every day on the way to the gas station to the get same coffee one? there. Yeah. Oh, uh, nice. Yep. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. A ca- it's a Casey's. For Hy-Vee gas myself. I frequent the uh, the BP <laughs> down the street from my house, so they they know me there. I'm a nice. regular. Uh, I used to be a BP man myself. <laughs> it just happens to be the closest one. I I typically stop at uh, Casey's when I'm like out and about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the reason I, I don't know. I think a lot of people are going to remember in the immediate aftermath when Brad Hart told the news. Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to need the National Guard's help around yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, as I'm, like, in my pitch black neighborhood, uh, like, in impassable streets, you know, no, no no worries. Yeah. One day I was visiting my parents, you know, during the long power outage, and uh, their neighbor across the street came over to talk to us, and she's, like, you know, a middle-aged white woman, just like, just like a nice older lady, you know, and she's talking to me about how, like, we need to, like, run the mayor out of town. <laughs> she's, like, furious oh, at Brad Hart. Oh, people were pissed, dude, yeah. 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 I think she called him Bob Hart also, which I, I, <laughs> I, I interpreted as a intentional disrespect. Yeah. You know, <laughs> referring to him by the wrong name. Uh yeah, I think we've we've probably satisfied our derecho talk. Let's move on to other topics real quick. Um so one thing, you know, because Chuck was out of power in internet, uh we we were kind of not recording episodes for a while. And one thing we missed during our time away was the anniversary of our show. We released Oh yeah. Yeah, we, we released we made it. We released the first episode of Rock Hard Caucus on August 20th, 2019. Jesus. And uh, before the storm knocked us all out, I was I was considering doing some sort of celebratory episode. But uh, yeah, sorry, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening. It would be too narcissistic. Too to, late now. Uh, you know, it's cool though. I'm I'm yeah. You know, it's, we did we made it. Like most podcasts yeah. don't make it past a year. Oh no, I, dude, I don't think most podcasts make it past like three or four episodes. Honestly, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I was considering doing an episode where I just like. I was going to go through and like sort of do a brief summary of each episode and like we do like a year in review thing. Oh no. Uh, or like a best of where you like, like clip out all the funny show? shit. Yeah. No, I wasn't yeah, show. Yeah. Clip show. I, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to do a clip show. I was going to like do a, a conversation among us about like all the shit that we've talked about over the last year and like how much how much things have evolved and changed since uh August of 2019. Yeah. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> Remember of hope we were. I think we're in a different <laughs> mental state now than we were. Yeah, <laughs> a little more then. weathered. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> literally the weathered. Light has left our eyes. Yeah, <laughs> we're now forming uh, militias and <laughs> hoarding water and gasoline. Um. <laughs> it's Mad Max Fury Road in here. Mm-hmm. Uh, another subject I wanted to touch on. Like I suspected, we we kind of have filled almost an hour just sort of bullshitting. Schools reopening. I know that uh, Natalie has been dealing with this. Uh, I also have been dealing with this. Uh, any any thoughts on on what's going on with this current school year? <laughs> it is so hard. Um, <laughs> like we, uh, um, my daughter was or is now going to kindergarten this year, and it has just been an emotional fucking roller coaster trying to figure out what we're going to do. I mean, we had always counted on like, okay, we only need to save and make it through childcare until she's five. And now it's like, oh, well, (laughs) here's (laughs) right. You just have an indefinite amount of daycare forever. Like there's no end date. What could it be? We don't know. We don't know if they'll ever like how long until they can go back to school. And then just like, I don't know, making plans was so hard and we spent months trying to slice it and figure out what to do. Um, And then the governor released an executive order after like what? So she's in Des Moines Public Schools and they held meeting after meeting and surveyed every single parent in the district and every teacher and surveyed the kids and just like worked really hard to put together this return to learn plan that like had an online option and a hybrid option. And like they, we went to a bunch of meetings about it. Everything seemed like kind of ironed out and ready to go. And then 
it was one to two days after I had signed up for 100% online and figured out childcare, and the governor released an executive order saying that schools had to be in person. Yeah. And it was just fucking devastating. And it'll just tear through the schools. Like, do people, like, are people familiar with five-year-olds? Like, <laughs> They're disgusting. <laughs> They're awful. They're disgusting. <laughs> we, we went camping for a week, and she had to wear a mask the whole time, and she would use her tongue to put it up and down. <laughs> yeah, I was going to make sure you mentioned that. <laughs> She would st- Take, takes it off to cough. <laughs> <laughs> They're so bad. At- she would use her tongue and stick it up by her nose and yank it down with her mouth. And <laughs> just like no matter what you did or how much you insist, and none of the masks fit kids, right? There's no, you know, it's like almost like kind of a formality to, <laughs> to put them in it. I try my best, but like their heads are so tiny and just like they're they can't they're not competent at literally anything and <laughs> they're always eating just like <laughs> and they take the mask off to talk like <laughs> yeah. it's just like every time you turn around the mask is off like it's just it's it's stupid it's a stupid idea to think that you could bring kids back to school when stuff is this bad well The good thing about that is actually is that uh, children actually cannot get uh, uh, they do. It's actually not bad, which is good. No, it's not bad at all. There's no elderly teachers or staff or anything in schools at all. So or like, you know, the children never see their potentially older parents with health problems or older relatives or anything like that. You know, it's it's really not a big deal. Yeah. Fuck teachers. Yeah. So they're yeah, yeah, they're they're titled. The solution yep. is that the kids have to live at school. Or they teach themselves. <laughs> like the NBA bubble thing. You do that with every school district. <laughs> <laughs> it's works just working I very mean, well in the NHL, by the, the way. Kids are, the kids are going to call Instagram models their tutors. <laughs> <laughs> to sneak them into their bubble. They're just in there watching TikToks all day. Like the text bubbles. Like learning to read from TikTok text bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to go get some lemon pepper chicken. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just been horrible, which luckily to the credit of Des Moines Public Schools, they sent out an email that was like, fuck the governor. We, we made this plan. We're sticking to it. So like technically they're not even approved by the state, but we're starting on Tuesday. So nice. yeah, I it's such a silly small thing like compared to everything that's going on in the world. But like. I just always had this picture, like, since she was born, of, like, sending her to kindergarten, you know, yeah. driving and watching her with her oversized backpack yeah. and her, like... finally being rid of her. ...little tiny body walking into, the like, the school and, like, just all the activities. And I just had this, like, dream about elementary school, and now it's, like, it's just on the computer. I don't know. <laughs> everything's the same, except for she has to skype all day it's just it's just disappointing like it just is not how i imagined it and i loved school as a kid so like i thought we would have this together and it just it's just hard and like i don't know it's such a little thing like people have so many bigger problems and so many people one thing i think is pretty ironic is like oh all of a sudden the governor gives a shit about the public schools (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, oh, no, we got to get those open because we love those so much, <laughs> even though we cut, like, everything every single yeah. year. It's like you only care about this so people can go back to work and get churned through the, like, fucking meat grinder of capitalism. You don't give a shit about schools. You don't give a shit about kids' educations. Like, it's awfully ironic that all of a sudden you act like you care. And then the people who actually have devoted their lives to caring for kids, which is the fucking school districts, you're telling them to, like, get bent. Which, like, again, luckily, like, someplace like Des Moines, the district actually has a lot of autonomy and power. So I I feel a lot more for some of the smaller cities where they don't have as much. But the, like, strength of the district and the union and the board mean that, like, they can, like, kind of say, go fuck yourself. Yeah, I believe the Iowa City School District is currently in a lawsuit with the state. Yep. One of the, I guess silver linings you could say too about the storm here in Cedar Rapids is it's pushed back the start date for a lot of the schools here in town because they were fucking damaged by the storm. They pushed them back to January. Yeah. Yeah. Kennedy in particular really got it bad. Like the high school's bad shape. Yeah. Um, Prairie's fine. Prairie's been in school, but Prairie's a relatively new school that's built like a rock. 
there's no trees around there or anything, yeah. and their power was destroyed pretty quickly, of course. And but like Wash and Kennedy and Jefferson are all in pretty bad shape, from what I've heard. Yeah, I've seen pictures of uh, like interior at uh, Jefferson, and it's not good. Like the ceilings are all falling apart. I wonder if that big glass wall in the band room at Wash got blown out at all. You know, like that those that huge uh, yeah just I've, window I've, wall. I've been by it. It's fine. Oh, yeah, it survived. What does the rest <laughs> of it look like? Uh, the Darn. <laughs> um, you know that hill <laughs> next to uh, what we referred to as the jock lot? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah a, a lot of those, yeah, yeah, a lot of those trees came down. There were a bunch of trees on that hill that came down. Um, and the the fences around like the tennis courts, those mm-hmm. got all mangled and messed up. Oh, yeah. Because they got like that plastic that's woven in with the... Right, uh, yeah. Which probably just acted as like a wind sail when the fucking yeah. wind came through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't looking super closely, but the building looks mostly okay at Wash. I tweeted about this, but one nice thing that I noticed. Um, so across the street from that big uh, glass wall that you were talking about, Chuck. Yeah. Uh, one of the houses near the school, they had uh, one of those blue line uh, American flags prominently yeah. displayed Yeah, I know fence. exactly where you're talking about. Yeah. They've had it forever. Yeah, yeah. And they have like a camera pointing at it because they know that they're just <laughs> antagonizing teenagers and they just want to uh, yes. <laughs> catch them in the act. Uh, but the, <laughs> the storm appears to have stolen that flag from them. Hell so. yeah. <laughs> oh, no. That was or pretty funny. Or someone took the opportunity. Oh, my God. If I was in high school, I would have gone nuts. Like, <laughs> with the chance to go steal signs and shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I used to collect those support our troops with ribbons, like the map. <laughs> <laughs> I had a bag of, like, 50 or 60 of them that I pulled off people's cars. <laughs> And it wasn't even particularly political. I just thought it was funny. Oh, yeah, it's funny to steal stuff. Yeah, or like at Christmas, we would drive around and steal the Jesuses out of the Nintendo- <laughs> 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 And I remember one time having to like tear the cord out of it because it was a like glowing light up Jesus. <laughs> Just imagine like getting electrocuted by one of those and like seriously <laughs> injured and being in the paper. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I was stealing. You'd a probably baby be on Jesus. Fox News. You like would be on Fox Oh my yeah. god, yeah. You'd be a poster child for the intolerant left that wants to <laughs> erode the American way of life. Literal war on they Christmas. They go to my house and find all the support our troops. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, like a squirrel's nest just like full of fucking nuts. <laughs> it's just all the shit you've stolen. <laughs> the street sign at the corner of Beaver Avenue and 34th Street Southeast had been knocked over and I almost brought that home with me, but I, I left it. Because it was all, like, bent to shit. It would have been cool to just have that. <laughs> Dang, yeah. I used to live on 34th yeah, Street. You so. Yeah, you should <laughs> Well, You should have done this. I kept thinking about it, but then I drove by one day and it was gone. So either somebody else got it or the city recovered it. <laughs> I bet somebody else got it. I said this on Eat the Rich, but my best friend lost her trampoline, which I think is so oh, fucking dude, funny. Oh, dude, yeah. I saw that, too. <laughs> I, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> While I was They're looking, just gone. yeah, yeah. <laughs> While I was looking out the back storm window, I watched a trampoline roll down the alley like a like a quarter rolling away. <laughs> it was insane. She just, she just could not find it. It's just gone. <laughs> it's someone else's problem now. Yeah. <laughs> it just fucking flew away. I love that. <laughs> How do you lose a trampoline? It's a fourteen. It's a fourteen foot trampoline with a net. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that reminds me. My uh, my brother in law had like an aluminum shed in his backyard, and that thing just got like smashed up like a pop can and just like blew oh, over yeah. into mm-hmm. his neighbor's yard. Yeah, did you see the grain grain bins and yeah. shit? Oh, Someone yeah, sent me. Yeah, twisted up. Yeah, there was a guy at a, in a car garage too who posted a video of like he was in the bathroom inside of the unit that he had rented or whatever, and then like the entire building outside of him just got fucking wrecked. Oh my god, I'm imagining someone being in a porta potty like in Jurassic Park. (laughs) No, it was like the only like like, actually like fortified part of the building was like the the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) Just taking a shit in a porta potty and just go flying. Just (laughs) flying everywhere in there. Steve, oh, this is Hurricane Toilet. <laughs> and this is a derecho. <laughs> oh, lovely. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know they're making another Jackass movie? Yes, I am pumped. Yeah, I... I don't know how I'm long it's going to take for it to come out now, but... <laughs> uh, I, I'm worried. I mean, like, most of those guys have, like, titanium hips and shit now. And, like... Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> I mean, steve has been, been have, like, still going strong. Like, he hasn't ever mm-hmm. stopped doing jackass <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, and he's fine. He's, now, he's like, too. yeah, he's like totally, like, normal now. Like, <laughs> well, Steve O's a different breed, man. Yeah, like, he's, <laughs> he's like in perfect health. <laughs> it's it's yeah. crazy. It's like the drugs made him invincible. Like, yeah. all the cocaine and PCP <laughs> and alcohol just made him stronger, actually. Yeah, you just go super hard for a few years and then you get sober and you're basically immortal. Yeah, and you yeah. go vegan. <laughs> yeah, man, it's like it's like Iggy Pop. Yeah, that's He's true. Never gonna die. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Iggy Pop as well. Yeah. Keith Richards. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that's he's it's the cocaine that's keeping him alive. Let's be real. Yeah, I don't know if cocaine really keeps you alive, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, my head cannon it does actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, that seems like uh we've We've come to a natural conclusion in the conversation. Do you guys feel the same? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I s- did you do you want to save the Reynolds thing for next time, or do you want to try to squeeze that in? Uh, I've got. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking for an hour, so I think we should oh, save. Oh God, you're right. Shit. We should save this because it's yeah, it's it's enough to fuel its, its own episode. I yeah, think, man. So. I want to talk okay. about that for a long time because okay. yeah. yeah. I hate sure. I hate that crazy bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she just keeps <laughs> stooping to new lows, really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. she does. Yeah, she might almost not get reelected. <laughs> <laughs> she may win with uh, only only a little bit of a, a majority this time. <laughs> 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 All right. Well. Uh, I guess I'll plug uh, Natalie and my appearance on Eat the Rich one more time. If you were missing us during the, our absence, uh, I think that's a pretty good a good uh, replacement for a Rock Hard Caucus episode. We get like really upset about uh, about the world that we live in and the uh, the people who are in charge of it. It's kind of depressing, but it's probably funny too. I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of our specialty. I so was so like I just like all of them so much. I was so nervous, and I can never listen to it. So you should just tell me if it's good I or not. I listened to it. And I it was never, good. <laughs> I could never listen to it because I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah, Ashley listened to it, and she said it was good too. So I think that's that's enough for me. It's probably good. Uh, so I'll link that episode in the description of this episode. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully we'll not face any other, you know, life-threatening disasters anytime <laughs> soon, and we can continue producing audio content for your enjoyment in the near future. Yeah, hopefully good things start happening, maybe. Mm. You guys would hear something really funny? Yeah. The election is two months away. <laughs> Everything is going to change after the election. Uh, Everything's yeah. going to be better. Is two months away. Dude, the first uh, debate is in a couple weeks. I'm so oh excited. Uh, me too. Oh my God. Do you guys this... remember what a lifetime away it felt like during the caucus? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really it does. It kind of does. Uh, yeah, and not for me, man. <laughs> like, it's going to be here before I know it, before we all know it, really. I'm. They're going to pump both of them full of so much drugs. I'm just so excited. Oh, it's yeah. going to be a bloodbath. I mean, remember it's that be so Bernie funny. Biden debate oh. where Biden was oh uh, extra he was like extra chipper, <laughs> you know? He was like grinding his jaw. It's amazing. Yeah. All Trump needs to do is come out on stage with a pillow from the my pillow guy and like <laughs> throw, it, throw it yeah, yeah, throw it at Joe Biden's feet and say Take a nap, Sleepy Joe. It's time for bed. <laughs> and, like, he's, he's he wins. anyways, but, yeah. But he might as well have fun with it, dude. Like, he might as well just, like... Oh, he's going to have fun with it. <laughs> oh, he, he loves it. Like, I, I watched, I've been watching some of his, like, speeches and, like, his, like, um, rallies he's been having lately. And it's... it's He's just doing, like, stand-up. Like, he's not... He's yeah. just loving yeah. it. <laughs> Good it's for like him. like a pig-eating shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I think that's he's the 29th. He's so lucky. So. He's so lucky he gets to run against Joe Biden. <sighs> I know. Oh, yeah. If, like, I mean, we don't need to go into how hard yeah, Bernie would have we'll, won. We'll, we'll but... save it for next episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually, yeah, actually kind of looking forward to actually doing, like, a debate discussion. <laughs> oh, yeah. Christ. I'm, I... I'm so excited. Ugh. To, Ugh. to, to not them. have... <laughs> To not have any, no, not to have any dog in the fight, though. Like, oh, sure. 
I feel it's like pure, before pure spectator. Yeah, yeah. It was like kind of stressful because I was like, okay, this is like a stupid spectacle that has people's lives on the line. And now <laughs> it's just like, this is fucking pro wrestling yeah. bullshit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, We're already doomed, so fuck it. <laughs> let's just watch these two oatmeal smooth brained motherfuckers. <laughs> just like, they're going to babble. Can you imagine them trying to answer your questions and then respond to each other? It's going to be incredible. I'm so happy. <laughs> All right. Well, before we uh, continue unleashing more of our pent up pod energy, I think we should stop recording. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, Chuck, Natalie and Evan for speaking with me this morning or this afternoon. It's 1230 now. Anyway, (laughs) thanks for listening. (laughs) We'll see you next time. Uh, We have a Patreon, too, if you want to give us money. So see you later. Bye. (laughs) God bless. (laughs)